Dean. Hi. Hey. All right, everyone. Um, I'm Dean, and I'm the digital influencer for Dow, and uh, we're here with the uh, amazing Dennis of the board, you know, or the punk, as I like to call them. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, I just want to start off with uh, asking you about the um, the dis the uh, disability activism. Uh, so, if you maybe you want to tell us a bit more about that. Um, yeah. So I started doing activism around uh, disability issues when I was about 25 so um, and I'm now 47 I'm, I'm like proper grown-up age or supposed to be at least um, so and um, I first started getting involved through my local coalition of disabled people in Manchester which is uh, for Greater Manchester Coalition of Disabled People and I learned a lot there about our history of our people and about campaigning um, and about um, politics and then since then I mostly till a couple of years ago I mostly have just joined in with campaigns and played at events and gone to protests and things like that but in just the last couple of years now, I've st I've got involved in two committees, which is quite new for me. Um, and that's how we know each other through the Disability Arts Online Board of Directors, because I am co-chair with um, Amy Zamripa Solis at the moment. So yeah, so that's kind of, I've got a long history. I've done a few different things over that time. Uh, oh, that's amazing, you know. Just says it all yeah anyway um yeah so yeah and also i noticed you uh you also um did some uh, music as well because i saw some videos of you uh in some room and uh you're playing the acoustic guitar i tell the listeners i was like wow they got the music as Aww. well so yeah just you want to tell us a bit more about that yeah so i always have been a musician since i was a kid um because my dad's musical and his family going back uh several a lot of generations back to the music hall have always been performing kind of grassroots musicians so no 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 orchestral musicians and uh, music readers among us we're all kind of very um have either kind of done pop music or popular entertainment um so that kind of goes back in my family history so i i always did that from being quite uh, from being well, I got my first instrument when I was about five, but I got, and I first started playing guitar when I was seven. So, um, and then uh, when I'd been in the disabled people's movement a couple of years, uh, one of the other disabled artists called Lee Sterling, for, who does music as well, he found out that I used to do music, but I had stopped. And, um, and he told me I should give it a go because he said, and I think he was right, he said like, with our activism, we've all got different skills and sometimes we've got more than one skill, but we can try and use all of our skills to make a change in the world. And I thought he's right about that, you know, so I decided to give it a go and, and, and I'm still doing it now. Yeah, I mean, everyone starts uh, somewhere. I don't even notice her uh, yeah, hair was a little bit different. It was like sort of greenish and all that, kind of like uh, Avril Lavigne in um, 2010 and all that, you know, when she did the, the song Smile. <laughs> did it, actually, oh, did, it so actually, cool. it reminded me of that. I was like, oh my God. And that song just immediately started playing in my head and all that, especially the video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, like to, I like to have hair that's good fun. So I've had a lot of fun hairdos over the last 20 odd years. And actually this one at the moment, is a lot like the one I had twenty years ago, just different, different colour maybe. Yeah, uh, looks a bit more, looks a little bit like a uh, mohawk, like because there's some people I uh, know in Camden. There's this guy called uh, I think his name's Zombie, and he has a sign that says "Help Punk Get Drunk" and all that, which he like says people sort of pay <laughs> to have a picture with him and all that. He's got like a face tattoo and all that, that looks like a spit, like a skull face and all that. But he's yeah, he's oh, amazing. amazing. <laughs> they all got like punk. Awesome. They all got like punks that like styles there, and I was like, wow, I need to do my sides again, you know. <laughs> and I've also got this thing where I do a quiff sometimes, even though I've got a dread looks like the Teddy Boy dreads, you know, that sort of. Thing. This is it. This is what I love doing with this is mm. making a quiff. I used to wear it in my twenties. I would wear it very spiky, 
And then oh, when yeah, I grew yeah. my hair long, I, I, I eventually cut the fringe in and the quiff came back. Oh, nice. But now I kind of wear it usually in a curl, which, which yeah. is quite old fashioned. For my age group, it's kind of how your granddad might have had his hair years ago. <laughs> so, well, my, I mean, yeah. my, my, I mean, I'm not going to lie, my granddad was called Dennis as well. But he did, he, uh, <laughs> I mean, he didn't really, um, I mean, I think he had sort of, sort of slicked hair and all that sort of a bit and when he was younger, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I've got people the similar age group to you who go to uh, like slimes, and they they've got like you know red hair, and it's short, and like, they look like, actually look a bit like Otep a little bit, you know. Yeah, and you, we both quite like dressing up a bit as well. Not just yeah. like, we like having interesting hair, but we both quite like dressing up for things as well. Oh, so like yeah. when I do a gig, I always have different costumes, and I know you like to dress up when you go oh, out, yeah. don't you? I've, I've even worn like you know uh, black eyeshadow and black lipstick and black nail varnish you know even you know, awesome. gloves and uh dog spiky dog collars and all that you name it I'm a bit of like a uh punk goth kind of like hippies sort of you know like i love it we're like soulmates yeah. except i'm just so old i could be your mum but not quite so right, like i said I've, <laughs> I've got a friend who's a bit older than you so in fact i've got several friends who are older than you and they're still punk goth and we're like you know soulmates and all that so it's all good don't worry uh, <laughs> i've even got a I friend think, who, I think I've, get... I've, just said, I've even got a friend who called uh he's like his name's bell yeah but he's like he got hair metal and he's like 59 wow. but he's still like you know hangs out with me and my friend who's like you know 22 and 31 so yeah we're all different ages and all that and he's yeah <laughs> Looks like I think Steve it's really Stevens. important we learn a lot from each other being in yeah. mixed age groups, don't we? Yeah, I mean, you, you heard the guitarist Steve Stevens, right? Yes. Yeah, he's like a spit, Bell is like a spitting image of him, yeah? Like, wow. The highlight, you know? <laughs> uh, That's and, awesome. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, we want to, yeah, shared musical interests. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I know we probably talked about this before, but you know, um, it probably might be something we missed out last time. Or <laughs> yeah, um, you know what amazed me when I chatted to you last time was that your music knowledge was so extensive because you knew all the old bands that oh. I used to go out and dance to when I when I was in my twenties, and you know, like almost every other band in between. And also, it was so fascinating um, when we chatted last time to talk a little bit about disabled people in music as well, and how um, how we're not always spotted, but other disabled people will will spot other disabled people in bands. Oh yeah, there's. I mean, I mean, the thing is, there's a lot of like you know the disabled people in the like I said alternative and musical community and LGBT. We all like I said, we're all like one big uh, society. Well, against the mainstream society, who like yeah. When, you know, I mean, we're the resistance, it's like we're the underground, you know, the ones, it's almost like uh, the thrash metal scene against the whole big hair metal scene that was in the 80s, you know, <laughs> like, Meta like I remember when uh, Metallica, I think it was James Hetfield said like, the, the lead singer of the band Rap, yeah, said, aren't we one big metal family? And James Hetfield was like, no, get out of here, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we're they all were one big metal there. family, they were just except like, them with the girly hair. Yeah, I mean, oh, yes. I mean, I've heard people call the '80s as like the um, the time where the men were as hot as the ladies, you know. Absolutely, and I think it's coming back as well. Everyone should get to wear skirts and makeup and yeah. trousers and braces. And I love that. I love messing around with gender when I when I dress. And I think I mean, for me in the '80s, knowing bands mm. that would mess with gender a little bit really was so nice because I lived mm. in a very very sort of heterocentric environment so you could mm. sort of see yourself reflected you know yeah i mean there was even this guy uh michael monroe from um what's that band called uh hanai rocks i mean oh, if yeah. you if you didn't know his name or no like no what you if you the moment you saw him you would legit think he was a woman like especially in that song um don't you ever leave me now or something like that you know he's yeah. honestly very it's almost like a, honestly i was like looked at him and was like whoa Hot, you know. I thought because oh, are, gonna... are we are we allowed to swear on your video? Yeah. Yeah, proper gender fuckery. 
Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of, that's, you know, that's the phrase. I think the 80s was such a great time for that. But I think Uh, the way young people are doing it now is even even better. It's more advanced. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I wish I was around in the 80s. I mean, a lot of us are young youngsters do. Like, I mean, let's say I've got friends with the hair metal and the 90s. I mean, I'm probably more 90s, like, alternative um, industrial metal and all that, but... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, still, you know, I'm still old school. I mean, I guess I was born uh, that time when grunge was, the Seattle scene was taking over and hair metal was going out. And I mean, the thing is, I I feel like rock, things don't die out. They just go to sleep. They just like um, go underground in the wilderness, but they're still there if you look, you know. It's only, it's only, usually people think the only music that's around is what the, media want to like you know advertise or what they want everyone to hear you know what i mean or what style they want everyone it's like i mean thing is it's like i like these rock stars who rebel i mean i mean i know um what's his name john lydon johnny rotten's a bit of a uh well idiot asshole sometimes but he did have something that i kind of relate to he's like i do what i want to do and no one tells me what to do you know yeah, very very like he's a very rebellious guy like he just John hates Lydon he just hates ev- like he hates everything you know what i mean he hates everything and everyone you know he's like oh I don't, oh it's bullshit you know it's a joke it's a fast <laughs> you know ever feel like you've been cheated good night you know? <laughs> oh there's sid- not many people more yeah. punk than him yeah sid vicious was nothing more than a coat hanger to fill an empty space <laughs> <laughs> yeah he said that oh my god that's awesome John Lydon, uh, he's just uh, so punk. Uh, and so way, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I saw the Sex Pistols, I thought like those two are like you know almost like the toxic twins of that band. You know him and Sid yeah. Vicious. You know like like you know Dark versus Light. Like John the Blondie and Sid the Dark Evil Twin. You know. <laughs> and what's amazing though is seeing some of that same stuff coming back. So my own one of our children is sixteen, and she's a bit of a I don't know, I don't know if she'd label herself, but a bit of a goth or maybe a bit of a punk and has a side shave and she just bought a brand new denim jacket. And then it was mm. very 80s what she did with it, to be honest. But this mm. brand new denim jacket, sliced it into pieces and ah. then put it back together with safety pins and took the sleeves off and then put them back on with safety pins. So I was like, this is just... And I remember one of my earliest memories was visiting England as a child and I was about mm. seven and I saw some punks outside some shops, some real punks. Mm. And I was just fascinated because I'd never seen anyone like them before. And I think one of the wonderful things about that punk scene is is, is how DIY it is and how that's that's never stopped, you know? Yeah. But I think, I think things that are experimental is where new creativity comes from, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, because... Uh... Friend, a few friends of mine have done that like they, you know, they sort of you know the ripped whole ripped up jeans thing they like sometimes they do that themselves I mean I, I wouldn't exactly do it because like I've got a bit of a I mean it's kind of weird but like I've got a bit of a phobia to like hold jagged holes and what like especially if I've got a hole in my oh, sock yeah. I'm like yeah I have, to, I have to throw it if it's got too many holes I have to throw it out because like yeah I can't look through it because if I see daylight through a hole, yeah, it's like buttons in the box to me. You know what I mean? Like you know, some people have that but, buttons in the box fear. I have that same fear with like jagged holes in fabric or held up to oh, the light. So held up to the light and no all that, ripped yeah. jeans for you, mate. No, uh, um, I mean, and also, I mean, one of my other friends, uh, Zandri, they have like um, they rip their not ripped up jeans, but like sort of cut them in half, like so the long trouser sleeves like are like almost like a dress in a way like and just like you can see their legs and all that but like they still got the jeans on and oh so they kind of come open yeah i mean so. I've, I've even seen people have take the sleeves off i mean one time i i mean i brought this uh sleeveless denim jacket and but it, it was all uh it was black and like plain yeah but i added like patches to it and all that so like mm. you know like the band him slipknot uh motorhead i thought yeah. jacket yeah. just like that covered in like activist patches that mm. unfortunately I grew out of it so I had to take everything off and I've got to put them on onto a new jacket but see I yeah. love all that kind of putting your own imprint on things actually I've been mean, literally right here I've got a pair of cheap eBay boots that I painted on for an outfit mm. that I, I I painted on these with acrylic paint and then I bought a cheap pair of 
denim hot pants to go with them and then put the same paint on those and then put the same paint on a t-shirt mm. um i think it was it's trans pride color stripes and then like i'm i'm happy then cheap costume for the next gig and then i don't wear that again so but yeah. you just can't do that unless you're rich with anything well, expensive. Yeah, I know. I mean, DIY. I mean, one, mm. I mean, the first jacket I got from like Camden was like a trench one. It wasn't leather, but like it was sort of dark and trench. It went down to almost my ankles and what. And that, and I was a bit, I didn't have as much money at the time. Yeah, I was a bit younger. Yeah. And like it literally took up, literally emptied my account because I thought, you know what, I really want that jacket. I'll get it. And I just made the silly decision of getting it. And I thought, oh, no, maybe I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll say, I'll get it back and get my money back. But you know, in, in the end, I, I didn't. So I've still got it. <laughs> and I've even got but another do one. Do you wear to it? That. That's the thing. Do you wear it though? Do you I, love it? I haven't worn it um, as such recently because I, you know, like, because sometimes I need a bit more pockets, but sometimes, occasionally, I'd wear it, because I've got another one that, like, it's kind of leathery, but it's sort of, like, greyish and, uh, well, grey bits mm -hmm. in it, like, almost like a, um, one of those um, sort of uh, vampire kind of games, where, like, you know, the hunter's got a oh, hood on. Nice. You know, and he's got, like, a, like, it's quite long as well, and like I said, it's got a hood on it, and it's, yeah, it's, and I've still got that one oh, as well. So, and I've actually worn that on some of my videos, you know, where I'm doing the vape. You sort of see me wearing it. It's almost like the Undertaker's jacket and I'm wearing my like, oh, um, awesome. dark, my dark uh, sort of um, cow urban cowboyish hat and all that, you know. Well, I wouldn't call it oh, a cowboy hat, but nice. it's, more, it's more like a, as if like a, as if there was like a big dark demon cowboy in something and he was out at night and all that, like a ranger hat, you know what I mean? It's kind of, mm. like, yeah. And I've got like a no, I mean, I, I get into trouble for spending more time on my outfit than I spend rehearsing for gigs sometimes. So, yeah. or like mm. last time I went to the States or uh, time before, I, mm. I, had to, I had to add extra baggage because one entire large suitcase was just one costume for a show. So for the next year, I had to <laughs> rethink like how, how much stuff am I actually going to take? Because I want one outfit for the parade, one outfit for the first show, another outfit for the second show, and the makeup's got to work and run together. But it's mm. funny though, because uh, someone at that time said to me, so I was probably staying with um, Johnny Crescendo, and he was like, Why do you spend all this time doing that? And I thought, Well, to me, it's part of a show. You know, it's part of when we're there to perform, we're trying to entertain people. For some people, it's also quite a visual experience as well as an audio experience as a musician. And like, I can't dance when I'm playing guitar, or so I'm yeah. kind of very static. For me, dressing up is part of that prep. And uh, I wondered at the time if he'd said it to me because he's a guy, so he just usually doesn't think about it very hard. He does yeah. sometimes. You just put a t shirt on and whatever trousers he had on, he's like, I'm ready for the gig. I'm like three days sewing a costume. You know, two hours before the show, I'm still sticking bits on. And he's like, what's wrong with you? And I sort of wanted to go, is it, is it just being a man? But I think lots of male entertainers also spend a lot of time on their appearances, you know? Uh, I mean, like uh, the whole of Kiss, for example. Yeah, or, and Alice yeah. Cooper, you know, and <laughs> yeah. uh, what's oh, name? Cooper. Angus Young, Angus Young. oh my God, like he, dan oh, he dances. Like there's, there's this video um, in 1990 of like um, ACDC and, like, and you see him like from like above the floor like doing his like guitar dance and all that and you've okay. got Jimi Hendrix doing that and then you've got, um, uh -huh. um, what's his name, um, the status quo guys doing that with the guitars and uh, so many. That's what I should say, I have, and, uh, to, have to dress up Slash, I can't dance like Slash, could, Slash kind of does it a little bit like that and uh, oh, got Eddie, Eddie Van Halen, I mean, rest in peace mate, you know. Oh. oh, yeah. And the whole Azuzi top with their beards, except for the guy called Mr. Beard, who doesn't have a beard. Who? Beard. Um, uh, what's his name? The guy's from ZZ Top. Oh, yeah. The guy um, that doesn't have a beard. His surname is Beard, and the others isn't, but they've all got really long beards. Wow, that's ironic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, if I could be any kind of rocker, I think I'd want to be one with a giant beard like that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I would have the giant beard. I mean, there is some who like, I mean, who are like, you know, cause they kind of lost the hair and all that, and um, they grew a beard. That like, there's a guy from Slayer, Kerry King, and then there's a guy from um, Anthrax, uh, Scott Ian. Like, he used to have long hair, but then he started falling out, and then he just grew a big goatee and all that. You might know him. He's he's very famous. Like, he's probably the most popular one in his own band and all that. But yeah.
Oh yeah, maybe. He's the, oh, yeah, he's the only one who hasn't got any hair anymore. Poor sod. But he's he's all right. You know, he's can still play guitar and jump and yeah. That's it. We don't need long hair to be a guitarist, although it does yeah. look pretty. Cool. <laughs> I yeah, mean, even um, La, even Lars Ulrich as well. You know, he's he's yeah still got it. You know. Oh, Dean, there's something I want to tell you oh, about. Go on. Go hasn't on. been announced to anyone else yet, so I hope it's okay to talk to you about it. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna be getting I'm um, getting involved in a film project as well. Oh. Um, which will be is coming up. Um, which will be called Our Powerful Traditions. And we're gonna be interviewing activists so from the last 50 years. Um, and that's new for me, it's a new medium working with film and interviews. But it's dead exciting, isn't it fun interviewing people? Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's really exciting. And the only reason that's not been announced is we're just waiting for, um, for everything to be fully accessible when we announce the project. Mm. Uh. Um, but we hope that it will be quite a big project in the end and it involves as many different people as possible. And so artists, activists, um, some ac academic activists and all people like that. And hopefully I can interview you back at some point. Oh, for it yeah, as well. of course. That would be amazing. Uh, anyway, um, we are out of time, unfortunately, but... Uh... Everyone, um, thanks for listening and tuning in if you're watching. And uh, thanks to Dennis for being a participant. And, uh, you know, great talking to you again. And uh, peace out, everyone. Peace out, Dean. <laughs>